suggested renewing tier money during my stock take on last year. And I will make my clear to members again this afternoon, and I expect that to be my last word on the subject. The very recent GDP figures for the last quarter were down 0.3%, evidence that the wider economy is still struggling. Consumer confidence in the economy remains low, and there are undoubtedly a number of challenges ahead. <coughs> but challenges can also be opportunities and don't need to be simply negatives. There is an opportunity here for many of those farmers who are willing to grasp those opportunities and to think positively about how they may be well <coughs> made to work for them. And I hope that we will see a very, very positive few years ahead of us. Let me turn to a common agricultural policy. I don't need to remind anyone here that a strong cap is essential to the future prosperity of rural Wales. Cap payments make up a significant proportion. In some cases, 80 to 90 percent of farm incomes in Wales, and that is too high a proportion. Through direct payments to farmers, CAP currently makes some £240 million pounds available each year in Wales, and around £110 million in more is invested in rural Wales and under the Rural Development Plan. It is my view and the view of this government that this investment must be safeguarded. We have repeatedly made it clear to the United Kingdom government that their demands for significant cuts to Pillar 1 are not in the interests of Wales or of Welsh agriculture. And I've also made it very, very clear that any UK minister who argues for an end to direct payments is not speaking up for Wales or representing our national interest. We cannot allow our industry and our communities to be sacrificed at the altar of ideological purity. The Welsh Government's vision of CAP is to provide clear and predictable levels of public support for agriculture over the next seven years. However, I do not want anyone to misunderstand that message. That does not mean seven years of staying where we are today. Rather, it means seven years of change and seven years to shape the industry to hardwire efficiency and profitability within each individual business. Any radical change in the cap would place the viability of many farm businesses in jeopardy. I believe firmly that the more gradual change providing farm businesses with a maximum period of adjustment is one which will help guarantee a successful future for us. I believe that farmers need a period of relative stability in terms of their subsidy payments to plan for the future, to revise business models and to ensure that their businesses can be efficient and profitable over the long term. With the, no, the new round of cap negotiations ahead of us, one of my main tasks is to ensure that Wales' voice is properly heard both within Europe and the UK. And can I take this opportunity this morning to welcome uh, Martin Nesbitt to join us. I'm delighted, Martin, that you've been able to join us this morning. And can I say as well how grateful I am and put on record my gratitude to you for the way in which you do conduct uh, negotiations on behalf of all of the UK, United Kingdom administrations. <coughs> I think it's fair to say that whatever criticisms I make of the United Kingdom government are criticisms of politicians and not criticisms of officials. Martin is very much a friend of Wales, and I'm very grateful to you for the work that you do. And I hope that farmers here and elsewhere are also grateful to Martin and his colleagues in DEFRA for the work they do in supporting um, the Welsh administration and uh, certainly myself as a minister in pursuing um, our policy objectives. It is important that we ensure that the needs and views of the industry are represented and are understood so that we do get the best outcome for Wales. I am committed to delivering an agricultural industry that is strong, sustainable and capable of supporting vibrant communities across Wales, and significant cuts to Pillar 1 will not deliver that. I will be making a statement later today about the uh, European Council that will be taking place this weekend in Brussels. And I will be repeating there some of the messages I've just um, outlined here this morning. I will also be outlining the steps the Welsh Government has taken to ensure that the Welsh national interest is represented uh, by the United Kingdom Government during the talks on the budget. We will be writing to members next week to outline how we believe the budget uh, discussions and negotiations will affect Wales. But let me say this again. I believe that we do need to invest in the future of our businesses in rural Wales. You do not invest in the future by cutting off support today. But at the same time, 
we, I also believe we need to begin a dialogue and a conversation about how we should best invest this funding in Wales, both through direct payments and through the RDP. I will be travelling across and throughout Wales to speak to people and to listen to people over the coming weeks and months. And I would encourage you all to take part in this public consultation. I look forward to a very positive consultation over the next few months on how we structure the new CAF payments in Wales. And can I say, in launching this conversation, I want to emphasise again that the government will inform and lead the debate, but will not offer, offer fixed positions and firm proposals at the outset. This really is a conversation about the future, where the government isn't simply uh, making its decisions before that, co that conversation, that con consultation happens. The government has an open mind and takes no preferred position. I want all of us in the agricultural community to join this debate, and I give all of you today a very clear undertaking that this government and this minister will listen and will take decisions based upon that debate. But I will take decisions based upon an informed debate and a decisions that are based upon information and uh, about uh, proposals. And I hope that the debate will be a very positive one about how we can invest in the future of, uh, of, of the agricultural industry and the farming community. And, in, and also in taking decisions, I will be not looking at the short-term, year-to-year viability of individual businesses, but I will be looking at the long-term sustainability and efficiency of the industry as a whole. Shaping the future growth of the industry rooted in strong individual businesses. And can I turn to my final point, the role of government? In many ways, uh, farms are no different to any other business. To survive in the long term, they must be run having due regard to the regulatory environment, the natural environment, the needs of the market, and to public opinion. Most of all, they need to have regard to profitability, ideally without a reliance on direct subsidy payments. But the firm foot in the pillar one direct payments give, give us give us an opportunity not simply to pay the bills of today, but to plan ahead for tomorrow. I want everybody to understand that the Welsh Government will support individual businesses in developing business models that are not wholly reliant on taxpayer support. Wales needs successful buoyant businesses that can survive through and beyond the next seven years. I believe that Farming Connect has a pivotal role to play, and I'm very grateful to Gary and the work that his team does. Farming Connect provides support for farm and forestry businesses in Wales to help them manage the inevitable changes that will accompany not only cap reform, but changes in society and in the marketplace. I hope that everybody who, will, who wants to build a profitable and successful business will engage with Farming Connect on a regular basis. The programme is already providing people with a comprehensive range of support services some fully funded and others subsidised by 80%. They will all help you improve the all-important bottom line. And I know as somebody who ran his own business before I was elected, I haven't always been a politician, that at the end of the day, it is profitability that is a key to long-term sustainability and long-term success. I hope that Farming Connect can work with businesses to deliver that long-term efficiency and that long-term um, <coughs> profitability. We are already utilising some of the newer communications channels to ensure that wherever you are, you can receive information guidance support, and support at a time and in a format to suit you. With support from Farming Connect, farmers across Wales have been encouraged to think outside the box. I know that we are developing skills in innovation, in entrepreneurship, adopting new practices, benchmarking performance, sharing ideas, and focusing on meeting market requirements. And that is different to the way it used to be, and it is providing a very, very strong foundation for the future. Can I say that I'm particularly delighted with the success of a number of the new Farming Connect initiatives. 28 farmers were selected to take part in the business, in the business innovation and rural leadership elements of a new Agri Academy <coughs> program. And can I say, Wim, how grateful I am to you personally for the work that you've done in, in leading this program. Uh, this is exactly where we need to be about guaranteeing and hardwiring a future in the industry. And doing Hannah Dodi Ochtaiti, Amma Gwaith, 
And I think my gratitude to you Wynne, is reflected also in the gratitude of many people who've taken part in these schemes and people who've all seen the impact of them. So if when we look at the Agri Academy program, I think we're looking at many of the future elements of how government can help and support uh, the industry. Can I also say that working smarter is a key building block to the future and one that represents considerably more than 74 recommendations in the Gareth Williams report. Uh, Gary Haggerty met with Gareth Williams yesterday, I think, to prepare for the publication of Gareth Williams' latest report on <clears throat> how the Working Smart process is being delivered. And I, I haven't seen it yet. I'm looking, I don't know if I am looking forward to seeing it. I think I'm just looking forward to getting it over with without a visit to the dentist. But uh, I, I'm, I'm very grateful uh, to the work that Gareth has done. And, and in doing so, I want to emphasize again that Working Smarter isn't a red tape review. It isn't about reducing the bureaucracy in inverted commas. It isn't about uh, the government changing. It is about all of us changing the way that all of us do our business. It's about driving forward almost a cultural change within the industry. It isn't simply about uh, red tape. It's about working smarter. And that is a key message for everybody, not only in government, but outside of government as well. I hope that we will be able to publish, I'm looking at you now, Gary, the, work, the, the, the update on the Working Smarter report in the next month or so. And I will certainly be making a statement to the National Assembly um, on, on this before the Easter recess. And can I just say, before I, I conclude my remarks this morning, on the subject of regulation, I am concerned, listening to many conversations uh, that I have with people, that there is all too often a view of regulation as being a wholly bad thing and something which needs to be swept away. Let me tell you now, I absolutely, fundamentally disagree with that viewpoint. I'll tell you why. Over the last few weeks, the news, been, the news has been full of stories about horse meat being found in beef burgers. That incident has given us another lesson in the importance of consumer confidence in food production and the potential fragility of that confidence. Confidence in food, in our food, is underpinned by the highly regulated nature of the food production industry. Without a market, we have no industry. And as such, we do the industry and individual farm businesses a terrible disservice if we simply dismiss regulation as simply an unnecessary tier of bureaucracy. When I go shopping, I buy meat and food for my family that I believe is good meat and food. Uh, I, without regulation, we would not be able to guarantee that. Without a regulated market, we would not be able to open up the export markets that we are doing today. We have to invest in consumer confidence. We saw in the past what happens to a market when consumer confidence is lost. We need to have an, uh, a debate with ourselves about that and to ensure that regulation is seen as a key as well as uh, sometimes as it's portrayed as a stick. Can I say in closing that the European Commission has placed a high priority on innovation through the European Innovation Partnerships on uh, agricultural production and sustainability. This aims to address two of the most fundamental challenges faced by European agriculture. How to increase production and productivity in order to respond to the significant growth in global food demand and how to improve sustainability and resource efficiency and address environmental issues. I want to encourage innovation and knowledge transfer to bring rural Wales into the knowledge economy. Food is a priority for the Welsh Government and we are supporting the industry to develop and move in positive new directions, embracing new technology and advancements in research and development. We want to put Wales at the forefront of food production. It's not only uh, an, an essential part of our, of our economy, but it's also an emblematic part of our national identity. The Government is committed to promote these uh, quality products that we produce across Wales to increase market awareness <coughs> amongst producers, to help them gain the um, available advantage to ensure that their businesses thrive and grow in the future. I hope that everybody will regard farming not simply as a way of life, but as a commercial business. 
I hope that together we can achieve a strong and sustainable market-orientated farming industry that is both profitable and sustainable. I hope you will have a productive and enjoyable conference today. You've certainly got a very impressive lineup of speakers, and I'm sure all of them will provide interest and insight into a way forward, <coughs> forward for Welsh agriculture. I look forward to hearing the outcomes of this, today's discussions, and I look forward to taking questions. But let me say this. I look forward more than any of that to a future that we have and we have an opportunity to make and a future that we can make together. Thank you.